Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we'll be talking about a second right hand rule used for something other than cross products. And this right hand rule is often called right hand rule number two. In previous videos, we talked about the application of the cross product in torque. And I mentioned to you that a torque vector that comes out of the page or out of the plane of the video corresponds to a rotation going counterclockwise. And I also mentioned that a torque vector going into the page or into the plane of the video corresponds to a rotation going clockwise. And I told you to just accept it as a convention, which is totally unacceptable. Um, and in this video, I'm going to try to explain to you where that convention comes from. And so that convention comes from right hand rule number two. And right hand rule number two is not used for cross products. It is instead used for closed loops. Now who on earth cares about closed loops? In vector calculus, you'll often see many applications of vector fields where vector fields are evaluated along closed loops. You'll have some axis and you'll have to draw a closed loop around it and evaluate the vector field or maybe integrate it along that closed loop. Maybe, for example, you want to calculate the work done by the gravitational vector field of Earth's orbit, where you know what the gravitational vector field is at each point in space and you want to sum up all the contributions of the gravitational field at each point along the closed loop of Earth's orbit. Earth's orbit is a closed loop that we care very much about. There are many examples of the uses of closed loops in math and physics. In vector calculus, you have the idea of Stokes theorem and closed loop circulation integrals. In electromagnetism, you have the idea of current carrying wires emanating magnetic field lines in concentric closed loop circles around those current carrying wires. And finally, in our example of torque, you have these loop-like counterclockwise or clockwise rotations of some rigid body about some axis of rotation. In all of these cases, you have some sort of closed loop that you're traversing about some sort of axis. And the question you have to ask yourself is what direction should that closed loop be oriented in, counterclockwise or clockwise, for a given axis? And that's exactly what this right-hand rule number two will address. And so with all that being said, let's see how this right-hand rule number two works. So for right-hand rule number two, or what I'll call the axis circulation right-hand rule, uh, what you want to do is the following. The first thing you want to do is you want to take your right hand, not your left hand. No, we don't want this left hand. This is the right-hand rule. We want our right hand for the right-hand rule. And what you're going to do is you're going to point your thumb in the direction of whatever axis you're interested in. So let's say I'm interested in this axis coming up, coming out of the screen, out of the chalkboard. I'm going to point my thumb up in that direction, out of the screen. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to see which way do my fingers curl around that axis. I'm going to try to wrap my fingers around this axis. Let's say that this piece of chalk is that axis. I'm going to wrap my fingers around that axis, and I'm going to look at which way my fingers curl. That will be the direction of circulation. And so in this case, you can see that my fingers are actually curling counterclockwise. This is the what direction that my fingers are wrapping around this axis. And so in this case, for an axis coming out of the screen, out of the chalkboard, the direction of circulation is counterclockwise. So what I want to do now is just look at two quick, maybe silly examples of this axis circulation right-hand rule where we want to determine the circulation about these axes oriented in these directions. So right here we have some axis, some vector going into the page, kind of like this, and we want to determine the direction of circulation around that axis. And that's what this cross symbol means from the arrow convention. Um, I explained it a few videos back if you don't know where that comes from. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to follow the right hand rule. So I'm going to point my, I'm going to take my thumb and follow this axis circulation right hand rule. I'm going to take my thumb and I'm going to point it into the chalkboard. So my thumb is going into the chalkboard or into the page. And I'm going to uh, rotate, wrap my hands around that axis, wrap my fingers, excuse me, and I'm going to see what is the direction of circulation. And so the direction I wrap my fingers in, well, it looks like it is 
clockwise. And so the circulation direction would also be clockwise. And so I'll just draw that around this. So this is a vector kind of going into the chalkboard. It's not the best drawing, but I'll draw that around this. This is the clockwise circulation direction around that vector. I'll also draw it around this symbol. Um, this is a clockwise circulation direction, and we have a vector going into the chalkboard straight through that. So here's a second example. We have just a vector. This time it's just going straight north. This is in the plane of the chalkboard. So again, we're just going to apply our axis circulation right-hand rule. I'm going to point my thumb in the direction of the vector on the chalkboard, and I'm going to wrap my fingers around this axis. And so I'm wrapping my fingers around this axis, and this is the direction of circulation I see. Um, this kind of looks like a counterclockwise direction of circulation, but um, it's kind of hard to describe. So let's let's just draw it first. So I'm going to draw this direction of circulation around my north pointing vector. And the way to think about this is to say, let's view this from above or view it from below. And viewed from above or viewed from a blow, uh, below, the direction of circulation here is counterclockwise. And that is how we would describe it with the axis circulation right-hand rule. So what I want to do now is look at a physical example where um, we can sort of see the use of this circulation right-hand rule. So here we have a 20 meter long seesaw. There's a 50 Newton person that just looks like a box sitting six meters away from the center of the seesaw. And we want to find out what torque does that person exert and in what direction is that torque going to be in? Well, we, the problem gives us that torque is equal to R cross F, and we're not too concerned about the physical meaning behind this, but we want to see the cross product meaning behind this. And so R is the distance from the center of rotation to where the force is exerted, and then F is the force exerted by this person's gravity, uh, by their, their weight, and we want to um, calculate this torque. So we know that the... Um, the force exerted by this person is six meters, and that's going to be in the x hat direction based on the coordinate system that was defined for us in the problem. And the force coming down here, it's going south, is 50 meter meters, and it's in the negative y hat direction, once again, based on the coordinate system. And that will give us 300 newton meters, 50 times 6, plug it into your calculator. Now the question is, what direction is? this. And I'm just going to use the right hand rule for cross products very quickly because we have a cross product here. And I have my first vector going in the x hat direction. And my second vector in the cross product is coming down south in the negative y hat direction. So I'm going to point all my fingers in the uh, x hat direction or point them to the right. And then I'm going to curl my fingers in the south direction. And I'm going to look at which way my thumb is pointing. And my thumb, this is a thumbs down. My thumb is pointing into the chalkboard, and so we know that into the chalkboard is the negative z hat direction. So once again, we have a torque which is negative 300 newton meters into the chalkboard in the negative z hat direction, which doesn't really make sense because I don't know about y'all, but I do not know what a torque going into the page is supposed to mean if torque is some sort of rotation. Um, so what we're going to do is we'll apply the axis circulation right-hand rule here. It's the application of the convention. And I'm going to take my right hand for a right-hand rule, and I'm going to point my thumb into the chalkboard. I'll point my thumb into the chalkboard, and I'm going to curl my fingers around that axis that I just pointed my thumb. I'm curling my fingers, and my fingers are curling clockwise. And that is the direction of the circulation of this torque axis. So another thing we can say about this torque is instead of 300 newton meters in the negative z hat direction, we could also say 300 newton meters clockwise because the direction of circulation about that torque vector is in the clockwise direction. And that's what you expect. You'd expect this system right here, this rigid body, to rotate clockwise if you put an object on this side of the seesaw. So what I want to do now is look at an example from electricity and magnetism where the right-hand circulation rule is most commonly used. And you don't have to understand this too much, but all I want you to know is that according to Michael Faraday, a current carrying wire will produce a magnetic field around it, and it will produce magnetic field lines that go in concentric circles, closed loops, circulations around that current carrying wire. 
and the magnetic field is a vector, it's represented by B, and the current carried in that wire is represented by I. And so what these magnetic field lines will look like is they'll look like these closed loops around this wire. And now we have a sort of problem here because we know that the magnetic field is a vector and that the magnetic field should have a direction. So what direction will these closed loops go in around this wire? Will they go down this way in this direction and wrap this way kind of? Or will they go up this way in this direction and wrap around the wire in this way? So that is where the right-hand circulation rule comes in. And what you're going to do is the axis of this wire will be the direction along which current flows. And you're going to point your thumb in the direction that current flows, and you're going to wrap your fingers around the wire. So wrap your fingers around the wire um, with your thumb pointed in the direction of the flow of the current, and that is the direction of circulation of the magnetic field lines. And so here my fingers are kind of wrapping up and around the wire, and that corresponds to this direction right here. So I'll change this, because that was not the right direction, but the right-hand circulation rule told us that this is the direction of the magnetic field. And that's a very common thing you'll encounter in your intro electromagnetism courses. And so this direction, if we view it from the ends, it kind of looks, from this end right here, it kind of looks counterclockwise. So I'll say counterclockwise from the ends. Um, and that is how you can determine the direction of a magnetic field using the right-hand circulation rule. And that's basically it. This right-hand rule is just a right-hand rule that gives you the right-handed convention for the direction of circulation about some sort of axis and what direction of circulation you should use for physical problems such as in torques or current carrying wires with circular magnetic fields around them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.